Community Television, a community service of Butler County Community College. Good evening. My name is Lance Hayes, Mass Communication inst uh, Instructor here at Butler County Community College, and this is In Focus. Tuesday evening at 7.30, the Instrumental Music Department here at Butler will be presenting its annual autumn concert, and with us as a guest this evening is Roger Lewis, Director of the Inter Instrumental Music Department. Welcome, Roger. Thank you very much, Lance. Uh, Roger, before we get to the specifics of your concert, which of course is why we're here talking about this, why, why don't we talk to you a little bit about your department. Uh, what sort of enrollment do you have? Uh, we have uh, several ensembles, Lance. We have uh, a wind ensemble, uh, sometimes called a concert band, and it has 40 students in it. We have a 17-piece big band, which is a jazz ensemble, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, an eight to nine piece commercial band, which plays popular music. So um, uh, the students who are in the concert band, uh, uh, or groups of those students, comprise the instrumentation of the other bands for the most part mm -hmm. as well. So we have an enrollment of about 40 students. And what would you assess the quality of the students that you have uh, here at Butler to be? Well, uh, you know, it's, that's a, a good question because uh, uh, this year, as circumstances would have it, only three students remain from last year. And oh, so wow. that, that can be, uh, on one hand, a rather scary situation because uh, you are having to nurture, uh, for all practical purposes, a completely new group of people. But I found that uh, the group of students that we had this year uh, generally are among the most professional that I've had in my 11 years at Butler. Uh, they're very respectful and uh, they're serious musicians. And uh, good so work I, ethic. And they have a great work, work ethic and that's really uh, one of the uh, things that we try to instill in the students above all else is the ability not so much to compete with each other but to learn to work together mm -hmm. in some sort of unified uh, capacity uh, in an ensemble, and music is a, a great medium for teaching those concepts. Oh, sure, yeah. What would you say the talent level is of these kids? Well, I, I feel that it's as good as it ever has been. Of course, every year you'll have uh, certain people who have had more experience than others, and we've certainly had from time to time in the past years people uh, who were fine musicians, but in terms of the overall level, um, of uh, ability, uh, this is as high as uh, perhaps as uh, higher than it's ever been in my 11 years. Well, that's got to be good for you. Oh, it's wonderful. It's it's a pleasure. Uh, you know, you look forward to going into rehearsals every day, and mm -hmm. you feel that there's going to be uh, a reciprocity uh, with the students. Uh, they're eager to learn, and uh, it makes one eager to teach. I would think that that would also speak well for the concert coming up, right? That you've got a good well, group of people. I, so. I think it's, it's going to be a nice concert. It's a, a, a very diverse concert in terms of the musical styles uh, for the uh, wind ensemble. Uh, well, the concert will incorporate, well, you said there's a crossover, but the concert band, the wind ensemble, and the jazz ensemble, mm -hmm. right? And does this work in kind of three sections? Well, no, it, it'll actually be, uh, uh, the wind ensemble and concert band are synonymous. That's, I see. That, I use those two terms I see. interchangeably. And then the jazz ensemble, uh, the 17-piece uh, group will be the one that is playing. So you have about 40 members in, in the concert band wind ensemble. Yes, and, then, and, and they comprise the membership of the smaller group as well. Well, what sort of, uh, what sort of music uh, will the concert band be doing, and, and how does that differ then from what you're going to be doing with the jazz ensemble? Though? Well, uh, the, the concert band music, uh, uh, one of the pieces that we'll, we'll be doing uh, is a piece that was written in the 18th century. Uh, actually in the year 1717 uh, by George Frederick Handel. Uh, it's called Water Music, and uh, we're actually doing two movements from this uh, suite of music. Uh, we'll be doing the overture and the a la hornpipe uh, movements. And uh, that music is, is really interesting from uh, 
the playing standpoint from the students or, or from the students' uh, perspective, uh, it's it's difficult and it has been quite a challenge for them. It was originally written. Um, uh, it was commissioned uh, by King George, I believe it was, in the year 1717 because he decided he wanted to have a dinner party on the river. And what he did was uh, um, procured a, a large barge, had his, all of his chefs uh, fix a, a real feast, and invited all of the uh, uh, courtesans to uh, <laughs> come hang out on the barge and handle, um, I, there, there are probably um, I don't know, perhaps 15 or 16 movements in all to this music mm -hmm. that he wrote specifically for this dinner party. So it was commissioned for the... It was commissioned for wow. a dinner party, you know, yeah. so it was quite an ordeal. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, uh, again, so then we have some classical music certainly yes. going here. Yes, and then the other two pieces that the concert band will be performing are contemporary works for uh, wind ensemble. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, they're uh, harmonically interesting, rhythmically interesting for the for the students, and so there's a lot of diversity in the concert. And some and some uh, good exercise of the talent mm -hmm. and, and what have you. Yeah, okay, terrific. Well, then when uh, you have the uh, jazz ensemble, that's become kind of famous, really, in the last few years. How long has that been around, really? Well, they had, uh, I've been here 11 years, and, and they had jazz ensembles before I came. Uh -huh. And um, when I came, one of the things that I tried to initiate uh, was an annual Butler Jazz Day. And uh, that typically takes place in the spring. And uh, the idea would be, uh, was to bring in a guest artist uh, every spring to work with the students. And now, is this a program, program that you initiated, the guest artist program? Yes, yes. yes. And okay. um, this year, um, I felt like uh, I wanted to try um, the concept of attracting more students to the college from surrounding high schools mm -hmm. and uh, opted to not take a trip with the ensembles this year and to redirect some of the funds that would have otherwise gone into travel into having um, uh, two guest artist uh, concerts during the year. So we're having one during the first semester this year uh, with Tierney Sutton and Frank Mantooth and that's the concert we're talking about uh, right. Tuesday evening. Well, first off, the jazz ensemble itself will play, what, a couple of numbers uh, before? Yes, we'll do three pieces. And um, uh, Tierney will be featured as a guest vocalist on one of those pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, Frank Mantooth will be playing piano on all three of the pieces that we do, as well as uh, our guest bassist, Glenn Holmes, uh, oh. will be helping out um, with this, too. And and Glenn from Wichita State yes, originally. Yes. yes. Okay, sure. I right. know he played in a jazz yeah, band. He's a wonderful, there, yeah. wonderful musician right here in our midst. Yes. So. Uh, well, uh, then Frank Mantooth, uh, we're very fortunate because we're going to have Tierney Sutton on the second half of the program mm -hmm. to talk to this evening. Uh, but Frank isn't here yet, and so consequently, can you tell us a little bit about him? Now, he's a jazz pianist, is that uh, right? Yes. Uh, Frank, uh, uh, I think grew up in Tulsa, as I recall. Uh, he's uh, in his late 40s, uh, early 50s, and uh, was an exceptional uh, pianist uh, in the Tulsa area and decided to pursue his career uh, then in larger cities. Uh, and at uh, some point, he moved to Chicago, where he, uh, uh, he made his, his home for many years, and mm -hmm. he taught at DePaul University and pursued a, a career as a composer and arranger in the jazz idiom. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has, uh, I don't know, 160 uh, arrangements, or something like that, uh, and compositions that he's mm -hmm. composed and published. Uh, he's been nominated uh, for a Grammy, I think, six times. And he's just a first-class talent. And one thing that's really interesting about Frank is that um, uh, I think it was Garden City Community College was able to get a grant to bring uh, Frank in for uh, a few weeks as an artist in residence. I was going to say, he isn't and entirely uh, unknown in Kansas. This was so. a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and he went out there and he met an attorney friend of mine who I had uh, played music with over the years, and the attorney invited him to, uh, Frank, to dinner and brought along the high school art teacher. 
and uh, they fell in love and Frank decided that all he needed was a piano and an airport and so he he married the art teacher oh and now makes his <laughs> home in Garden City Kansas but still travels well, throughout isn't that the country and the world yeah, really yeah. but the, but this guy has this high caliber of, of or a high level of, uh, of visibility in in the whole jazz world that's, that's amazing. Right. does he still then work as an educator as well yes or? he uh, is on the faculty at Garden City Community College and uh, also also on the faculty now at Fort Hayes State University, wow. uh, where he travels uh, uh, a couple of days a week to teach uh, classes. Well, one of the things that I think is really neat about your guest artist program, or what you've done at least for this concert, is the fact that you have uh, Frank and then you have Cherney Sutton, jazz singer, both who are educators and professionals. Yes. And consequently, it seems to me that in this kind of an educational environment, why they can bring the expertise and, and the, the fame of having worked in the real world and yet also understand how to talk to kids. And that's, of course, that's what right. you're trying to... Uh, Precisely. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of educators who are making um, a, a substantial uh, portion of their income traveling around to talk to students in clinic situations, but unfortunately many of them don't have the professional experience uh, of having worked and, and lived in the trenches. And uh, by the same token, there are a number of people who have worked and lived in the trenches uh, who don't know how to relate to students. Sure. And so it's been my uh, belief that one of the best services that I could do for our, not only our students, but students uh, in the area uh, as a service to the students uh, throughout this county and, and Sedgwick County would be to bring in uh, people who understand both sides of, uh, of the music profession and can relate to students and at the same time give them a realistic view of what it's like uh, to, to live in the world because to be honest with you uh, we're rather sheltered in this part of the world unless we have exposure to people who really know what it's like uh, uh, we can uh, go to uh, Los Angeles or to New York or to Nashville or to Sh Chicago not having a clue what it takes uh, to really break in and not really understanding uh, the need for uh, what we call paying dues right. to get into the profession because there yeah. are people who've been there uh, in each of those localities uh, for years and years and they aren't going to say, oh, here's someone new, I think I'll step aside and let them, sure. uh, you know, yeah. take my livelihood. Yeah, so. <laughs> right. It's a competitive world. Yeah, they and have a to lot be of realistic. times it's awfully hard to understand yeah. that. Sure is. Well, certainly Tierney Sutton is a, a, an artist of some renown as well as an educator. And uh, we do, in fact, have a tape of a performance of hers mm -hmm. that we'd like to take a look at. And then when we come back from the break, why, we'll talk to Ms. Sutton herself. But right now, let's hear a little bit of this singing ability. In the park, in the dark, underneath the moon, heard a boy and a girl humming Bernie's tune. Went to sleep counting sheep by a blue lagoon. Heard a frog on a log croaking Bernie's tune. It's so easy to whistle, it's so easy to sing, even hummingbirds humming. It's the thing, all the sports, so many jerks, pick it up so soon. Take a tip and get hit, make it pretty soon.
Welcome back to In Focus. My name is Lance Hayes, and I've been talking with Roger Lewis, Director of Instrumental Music here at Butler County Community College, about a concert coming up Tuesday night, 7.30, here on the El Dorado campus. Uh, a Boston newspaper uh, cited Tierney Sutton as being very comparable to the truly great Ella Fitzgerald, and uh, certainly this is something for us to think about because she's a guest artist here with the concert tomorrow evening. Uh, Welcome, Tierney, and, uh, and it occurs to me that they say, you know, um, those who can do and those who can't teach, but yet you're doing both, right? Yeah, I, I uh, started teaching at USC last semester, and uh, this semester I'm head of the vocal jazz department there. But our jazz department, as Roger was saying last uh, segment with you, uh, our jazz department has the same philosophy that, that uh, the head of the department is Shelley Berg, who's a great player and a great educator as well. And his philosophy is that he wants people that are both educators and players. So a lot of the faculty members end up on the road for weeks at a time and then come back. And, but it's really worth it. Cause they How well does this work out for you, though, when you're in something like that? It's been really great for me because I've been, been able to... Uh, make it so that my schedule uh, has me there for one really long day. So I see all my private students, I do a master class, and then I'm there a smattering of other times for juries and, and staff meetings and stuff. But it's been, uh, it's been great for me to, to be able to have my performing life and also be able to be at school. Well, now you mentioned Shelley Berg, and there's also like the likes of Ryan McCurdy and uh, Tootie Heath and, oh, yeah. and people that you perform with. Uh, uh, that's pretty good company. It's, um, it's really the advantage of living in a, in a bigger city. Sure. Um, you know, we're, we're really lucky to have uh, the, the musicians we're going to have tonight. And I heard Glenn play uh, on Saturday night. I was very, very impressed with him. He's wonderful. Um, and the great thing about being in L.A. or New York or one of the, the bigger uh, centers is that you've got all the studio musicians there and uh, all the people doing right. movies and TV. and. Because uh, your husband a, is that too, right? Yes, it? my husband is a is a trombone player. Uh, does a lot of movies and TV mm -hmm. work in the studios, yeah. and uh, it's great because you you get to have a high caliber of players to play with. Well, now the type of work that you do outside of recording is that essentially clubs? Do you do concerts? Uh, how does that work? Um, I do concerts. Uh, I do clubs. Um, there's there's a number of jazz rooms, I guess you'd sort of mm -hmm. say, in, in, in L.A. And sometimes I do a little traveling. I'm going to be performing in New York at the International Association of Jazz Educators Convention in uh, January, mm -hmm. and that'll be real exciting. So. And you work with Buddy Childers, right? Yep. I also uh, sing with Buddy Childers' big band and his small group. And how how does that differ? from the quintet and, and the big band? Uh. Um, it differs quite a bit. The, the big band has uh, arrangements that I pretty much have to stick to. And the small small group, we, we do a lot of improvisation. Mm -hmm. We do tunes we barely know just to have some fun with them. So. Yeah. Yeah, and is that the kind of thing that it's really popular with sort of an in crowd in like the clubs? Well, it's actually or? been very funny because uh, Buddy, of course, played with the Stan Kenton Orchestra when he was, I think, 15 or 16 years old, years and years and years and years ago. But you'd be surprised how many people come out to hear his band that remember him from those days, and younger people that have heard that stuff. So. There's a there's a little following for him, definitely. So it's well, kind of well. Now, you also we mentioned recording a minute ago uh, mm -hmm. that uh, you have recorded with with these people, but also are you putting together a CD of your own? Or? Yeah, I've got a CD that'll be released in December called Introducing Tierney Sutton. I've done some singing on other people's projects. I've sung on uh, Buddy's big band album that's coming out on Candid Records, and I've done a couple of tunes on. Tom Rotella, who's a guitarist in, uh, in L.A., he's on Tellark, and I've done a couple of tunes for him. 
Um, but this is the first time I'm doing my own solo album. Uh, are you doing anything in our concert <laughs> that is on your CD? I'm sure I'll be doing some stuff from the CD because I've got a couple of uh, vocal bass duets and I'm going to be doing at least one of those. And uh, I think I'll be doing one or two of the ballads that are on the CD. Well, you are performing with our ensemble, but then in the second half of the concert, why this is going to be essentially you and, and, and Frank Mantooth and then this group of local professionals that mm -hmm. Roger referred to a while ago. Who else is involved, Roger, besides uh, uh, Lowell Holmes? Uh, Glenn Holmes. Or I'm yeah. sorry, Glenn, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Phil Hawkins who has been on the faculty here as an adjunct percussion teacher mm -hmm. for a number of years. And Phil uh, is really coming into his own as um, a composer of uh, music in the uh, Caribbean, the West Indian style, and uh, is one of really uh, becoming recognized nationally as a steel drummer. But uh, he's also a wonderful jazz drummer uh, on drum set, and he'll He'll be really good for this uh, particular venue. I think it'll work out just well. Great. Certainly, of course, we're talking pros here, but at the same time, are you going to have some time to do some rehearsal work with this? Or we're planning uh, a rehearsal tomorrow afternoon, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, Tierney and 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 Frank will consult, and they'll decide what, uh, what they're going they to want work to into do. The program. So there's nothing really nailed down specifically as far as the music in well, the second half of the show. You know, I mean, I think it, when you, when you're working with with guys of this caliber, I'm I'm not uh, worried. You know, I mean, sure. I, I, if I threw a, a sheet of music in front of Frank and said I want to do this ballad, I I probably wouldn't even have to tell him, you know, the form I'm going to use. I'd just start singing, and he would he would know. You know, I mean. Uh, I, I know of his work from, from his book that, that I've known about for many years. He, he wrote a book on uh, piano harmony, isn't it? Chord voicings. Chord voicings. Yeah. And uh, so I've known about him for a long time and was really, really pleased when, when Roger said he was going to be Well, how did the leap happen from you being a Russian major at Wesleyan University to become a jazz singer? Well, you know, for me, um, it was pretty, pretty much that I... Um, when I was exposed to jazz for the first time, it really allowed me to to be myself in a in a in a different way. You had been a performer. I had up been a to singer, but I wasn't real serious about it because mm -hmm. I felt that in order to sing the songs of the pop era uh, of my day was, you know, I had to sound like those singers. I had to sound yes. like Barbra Streisand or you know like whoever was the. The, the singer on the on the scene, and I wasn't those singers. I was my own thing. So when I started to sing jazz, the harmonies really really attracted me. There was a lot of choices harmonically. Well, you paid your dues then on the East Coast, working clubs and, and what have you. How'd you get to L.A.? Well, I got to L.A. because in 1992 I um, I sang in New York at the Baha'i World Congress, and there I met several Baha'i musicians who were in the LA area, some trumpet players, a guy, Buddy, who was playing uh, first trumpet for Frank Sinatra at the time, George Graham, who was playing in the Tonight Show Orchestra, and uh, Bob Alcivar, who's a writer uh, uh, out there. And so I, I first went to LA to, to work with those people, and um, I loved it and decided to move out there. Well, how did you get into USC then? The well, that was because Shelley uh, Berg, I hired him to, to play with me, or I don't, I don't remember how we first worked together. I loved his playing, and we were performing together, and uh, he's head of the jazz department, called me last semester and said, would you like to teach here? And wow. I had been teaching private students mm -hmm, for many sure. years, and said, sure, I'll do that, and it's been a great opportunity for me. To, to well, certainly one of the questions that I asked Roger is this business of how much awareness there is with young people these days about jazz. And, of course, there you're in a position, of course, it's a big market and a big school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, what sort of student body do you have in a department like that? We've got great students. Um, we've got, I mean, two of my vocalists came to their lessons with their CDs that they already had put out. Wow. Um, so that's the kind of level of students mm -hmm. that I'm dealing with. It can be very intimidating for, for an instructor, but it's really great. You know, we have a, a trio that, that plays for the master class that I do with the vocalist, and they're, they're great. I would love to work with them. So we have uh, some variation. I mean, we have students that are more beginners, but there's a lot of talent and a lot of ability in, in virtually all the students we have, and the, and the program is very rigorous and pretty competitive. Well, when you perform, do you find that there's young people in the audience when you're 
Yeah, I can't say that it's the majority of the audience, sure. but I think it's simply a matter of exposure. I think that I never heard any jazz until I was 19 or 20 years old. I grew up in Milwaukee, so I didn't, I, you know, I was never around it, so I can't blame these kids. They've never heard any really groovy jazz. They've, they've heard other kinds of music, and they've heard kind of loungy, not great stuff. So mm -hmm. they think that's jazz, and they think I don't like that, but if they heard the real slamming folks, Certainly, this like is it. one of the things that there's not a lot of jazz played on Top 40 radio. Right. And so the kids don't get that kind of an exposure to it. Well, when you go into the classroom, uh, either uh, with your own classes or like coming into a situation like because you're going to be addressing the music classes here, you're going to be teaching a master class mm -hmm. here, and certainly, of course, then working with the kids as, well, not a peer, but certainly in the group with them, which has got to be a wonderful experience for students. Mm -hmm. But uh, what kind of response then do you find that you get in a situation like this? Um, well, I think at first um, a lot of the students don't necessarily realize how important it is for them to learn jazz. Uh, but basically the, the roots of all popular music that you hear on the radio comes from jazz. The, the serious working musicians that uh, are going to play in a lot of people's projects, that are going to do a lot of different things, have a background in jazz and have facility with jazz and jazz harmony. So it's, it's basically like being an athlete and doing your road work. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a skill, and it's a skill that, that any serious musician should, should learn and have some facility in. Again, uh, Roger and I were talking the other day that so often people don't realize that top rock musicians, lots of times, have classical doubt. training, jazz training, the, the background in, in music that it's a real heritage. And clearly, once they are exposed, certainly it's worked for you. Well, it's, it's you know, I was saying to the classes this morning that uh, singer Paula Cole, who's, who's very successful right now, was a friend of mine at Berkeley, and she was a serious jazz student. That's what she was doing at Berkeley. So. Uh, and um, she's a great writer and she's got a great career. She was with Peter Gabriel and now she's got her own solo thing happening and uh, was a very, very serious jazz student. So there's a million examples of that. Well, Tierney, we're really glad to have you here on the campus of Butler County because the, the opportunity to have our kids exposed, and certainly Roger is owed a big debt of gratitude it's a great program. You, you guys it have is. an a, exceptional program. It's a wonderful thing. And so we do want to uh, remind all of you that the concert is Tuesday evening at 7.30. Uh, if you're watching this on Tuesday night, you'll still have a chance to get here. And uh, it's free admission, no reservations required. It'll be at the 700 building here on the El Dorado campus in the uh, theater. So uh, please is join us. Is there a phone number us. they can call or anything? Uh, call... Um, Three two one three one one seven. Oh, okay. For further information, so do join us here Tuesday evening, seven thirty, Butler County Community College uh, Instrumental Music Concert, and we'll close out with a little bit of Tierney's music again.
thank you everyone and welcome to the first concert of the year presented by the instrumental music department but the county community college it's it's great to see all of you out there this evening that first piece was of kindred spirit a composition and an arrangement by robert shelton and uh, the next piece we're going to do is a selection of uh, actually two pieces uh, the overture and the a la hornpipe from handel's water music um, this story has an, uh, or this piece has an interesting history. Actually, it's a suite of, of several pieces that were commissioned, I think it was by King George in 1717. He decided he wanted to have a dinner party. So he commissioned uh, George Frederick Handel to write an entire suite, and then he uh, procured uh, a large barge, invited all of his dinner guests to take a ride on the barge down the Thames and uh, the orchestra played and the guests uh, were merry and uh, they had dinner and had a great time. So it was a big success and we hope we do the water music justice. This is water music selections by uh, George Frederick Handel.
thank you very much now to close the concert band portion of the program this evening we're going to do a piece by james swearing gin and it's called jubilant
you'll give us now just a couple of minutes while we set for the jazz ensemble we're going to move some things around up here and thank you uh, from the concert band we enjoyed playing for you That first tune was uh, a standard, just in time. It was uh, a Sammy Nestico arrangement. Uh, the next piece we're going to do is going to feature uh, one of our, our two fine guest artists this evening, uh, Miss Tierney Sutton. Tierney and I have known each other since 1991 and when we worked together in South Carolina. And uh, uh, she is so uh, talented. I have to tell you that she earned the respect and the admiration of all of the instrumentalists uh, with whom she was working. And that's a hard thing uh, sometimes for singers to do because instrumentalists are just a big drag when it comes to uh, putting up with singers. And uh, not really, uh, but this is, this is a, a great opportunity for um, the Butler students to have a chance to work with Tierney because she sings like an instrumentalist plays. And she's telling our instrumentalists that they need to play like a singer sings. And so when you have that reciprocity of, of, of uh, disciplines, uh, the outcome is really good. Please give a warm round of applause to our guest artist, Tierney Sutton. I always figure if I just walk out real fast, they'll stop. Predictable. 
Tell me I'm impractical Rainbows I'm inclined to pursue Frank Mantooth on piano. How about it for Frank Mantu and Tierney. I'll tell you, it's a real blessing to have Frank in this area. You know, he had been in Chicago for many years and uh, has been nominated for six Grammys uh, and is a wonderful composer and arranger, has uh, uh, several CDs out and well-respected throughout the world as a, as a jazz musician. And uh, he, about a year ago, moved a little more than a year ago, moved to Garden City. Fell in love, moved to Garden City. All he needs is a plane and a piano, right? Plane and a piano. So uh, it's great, because we're going to get to tap in to this wonderful resource. Um, our last tune is a Les Hooper tune called Mr. Casual, and it's actually named for a trombone friend, player of mine, who played with Les Hooper's band, and his name's Denny, and Denny was always out working casuals, and so Les needed a title for uh, a tune, and he called it Mr. Casual, after Denny Brunk from McPherson.
Richard. So we're going to give you 15 minutes to relax a little bit while we set the stage for uh, Frank and Tierney and uh, the jazz set. And uh, go roam around, look at our uh, display out there, chat, get to know each other, come back in, be happy. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Butler Community Television, a community service of Butler County Community College.
you guys just feel like we're in New York now? Let me tell you who's in this trio. You may already know some of them, but I'm very, very, very lucky to have them tonight. You've already met Frank Mantooth on the piano. He's a pretty legendary guy. I knew about him probably for about 10 years, and I've only been singing jazz for about 12 years, but he wrote famous jazz piano voicings book that was recommended to me some time ago. I want to be able to sort of see you guys. And on bass, we have the wonderful Glenn Holmes. And uh, he's, he's really up there with some of the best guys I've ever played with. And you guys are lucky to have him around here, too. And uh, our little brother says he's everybody's little brother, Phil Hawkins on the drums. <laughs> Sounds great. And he has a CD out of his um, steel drum music, so you ought to check that out and talk to him about that. or go to musicals. Day in, day out. That same old hoodoo follows me about. That same old tone in my heart whenever I think of you. And baby, I think of you. Day in, like I'm day out. Day out, day in. I need to tell you how my day is begin. When I awake, I awaken with a tingle. One possibility in view. The possibility of baby seeing you. Come rain, come shine. I need you and to me. The day is fine. Then I kiss your lips and the pounding becomes. The oceans roar A thousand drums Can it be love? Can there be any doubt? When there it is day in, day
the possibility of maybe seeing you come rain, come shine. I meet you, and to me the day is fine. Then I kiss your lips, and the pounding becomes the ocean's roar. A thousand drums. Can it be love? Can there be any doubt? And there it is, day in, day out. Day in, day in. Day in, day out, day, 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 do one with my brand new best friend, Frank Mantu. And this is a song written by Johnny Mandel with uh, lyrics by Dave Frischberg. And it's a really wonderful, kind of spiritually vibey tune. It always reminds me of people that have passed on and are not with us here and yet are with us here. So this is always what I think of when I sing this song. Uh, can I get a little bit of reverb in the, in the monitor? That's possible or not. If it is, do so. And if it's not, okay. Kittens on fourteen, and the old familiar feeling that settles over me, and it's your face I see, and I believe that you are there in the garden when I stop. Touch a rose and feel the petals sweet and soft against my nose. I smile and I suppose that somehow maybe you are there when I'm dreaming, and I find myself awake. Without a word. And I rub my eyes and fantasize And all at once I realize It's morning And my fantasy is fading Like a distant star at dawn My dearest dream is gone Just one thing to do Pretend the dream was true And tell myself that you are
And I find myself awake without a warning. And I rub my eyes and fantasize, and all at once I realize it's morning. And my fantasy is fading like a distant star at dawn. My dearest dream is gone. I love in the thing. There's just one thing to do. Pretend the dream was true. Frank Mantu. Where southern skies can watch me with a million eyes Or send me to sleep a lullaby of blues Great only where heaven's blue can make me dream a good dream or two Or sing me to sleep a lullaby of blues I am raising up all along with the breeze Hear the song of song to the trees Ooh, yeah my melody caress on the shore, but it'll be, I've heard it before. Ooh, 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 that's the Southland. Don't I feel it in my soul? And don't I know that I have reached my goal? Oh, sing me to sleep on a bird. me, yeah. With southern skies, can't watch me with a million eyes. Sing me to sleep, sweet lullaby of the leaves. Great on me where heavens blue can help me dream a dream or two Or sing me to sleep sweet lullaby of the leaves I am a breeze and a fall of all the breeze Hearing a song, a song of the trees Ooh, go, 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 soul and don't I know that I have reached my goal oh sing me to sleep a little bit
Glenn Holmes and Frank Mantu. The key to singing jazz is to know who to steal from. That's the only important thing to learn. And uh, this next one is stolen from one of the truly greats, Shirley Horn. So uh, if you like my concert, then. Well, in December, you can go buy my album, but it won't be here until December. So you can go to your local record store and ask for introducing Tierney Sutton, or the album by Tierney Sutton, since there'll only be one. And uh, Oh, we have 10 of those. Which would you like? Um, but anyway, uh, this is from a, a, an incredible CD. And... Uh, it's Shirley Horn singing, and it's string arrangements by Johnny Mandel, who's really one of my favorite musicians. And this song is called Return to Paradise. the sea return to paradise so of worthwhile his own to love to love 
love, to love, to love. You'll find your peace of mind Return to going to let Roger Lewis introduce our new friends here, if you would, Roger. Yeah, it's a pleasure to in, uh, introduce again Randy Roach, baritone sax, Dave Dobbins on alto saxophone, and Matt Blower on trombone. 
This is an arrangement by Bob Alcivar of uh, All in Love is Fair, which I've been able to look at twice and was introduced to Lo those three hours ago. So. But the good news is that it's in a hard key to sing. So. But it's all good. It's fun. fair in love Love's a crazy game Do people vow to stay In love as one they say Changed with time The future none can see The road you leave behind Ahead lies mystery It's either good or bad I tossed my coin to say In love with me you'd stay But all in war is so cold You either win or lose When all is put away A losing game I play To write the words again and that all in love is fair. A writer takes his pen to write the words again that all in love is fair. buddies. Well, speaking of our pals, we're going to feature Glenn Holmes on this next one. He and I are going to do a little duet. This one is, is on my album, kind of like this. I didn't know Glenn then. That's why he's not playing bass on my album. He was all mad at me, and then he realized I didn't know him. So, But this is this is sort of a Halloween kind of tune. It's a Dracula vibe, in love in vain. Don't you guys get puns? It's only human 
for anyone to want to be in love But who wants to be in love in vain? At night you hang around the house and beat your heart out And you cry your eyes out and rack your brain You shouldn't wonder why anyone as wonderful as he Should cause you such misery and pain I thought that I would be in heaven, but I'm only up a dream. Cause it's just my luck to be in love in vain. In vain. It's only humans. It's only human for anyone to want to be in love. But who wants to be in love or love in vain? At night you hang around the house and beat your heart out and cry your eyes out you rack your brain you shouldn't wonder why anyone but he should cause you such misery and pain i got thought that i would be in heaven but i'm only up a tree cause it's just my luck to be in love in vain at my mercy. It's only human for anyone to want to be in love But who wants to be in love in vain? At night you hang around the house and beat your heart out You cry your eyes out, then you rack your brain You shouldn't wonder why anybody else like him Should cause you such misery and pain that I would be in heaven, but I'm only up a tree, cause it's just my luck to be in love, just my luck to be in love, just my luck to be in love in vain, just, 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 just my luck, just, just my luck, just my luck, just my luck, just my luck to be in love in vain. Glenn Holmes. That is not an easy thing to do. I mean, for him, I'm just singing a song, but he's got to be the whole harmonic party. So we're going to feature our little brother, Phil Hawkins, and I'm going to promise him that the next time we work together, I won't refer to him as my little brother, but he looks a lot like my little brother. I mean, just as fate would have it, so it's it's not my, my fault.
clouds are flying all day long You only stutter because your lips just will not utter the words I love you Ooh, what a little moon like can do to you You better wait a while till the little moonbeam comes peeping through Oh, uh, you get bold, you can't resist him And all he say once you have kissed him is Ooh, what a little moon like can do possesses me to save for the second last tune one of the hardest songs to sing I know I don't know but that's what I have done for some unknown reason and I'm going to do this with Frank we just I don't even think we played it today we just sort of talked about it we just both liked it this is a great great tune called It Never Entered My Mind and it's, it's also I'm sure from some musical and it tells a very very sweet story
once I left When I heard you say That I'd be free Solitaire Uneasy in my easy chair It never entered my mind Once you told me That I was mistaken With the sun and order orange juice for one, it never entered my mind. But I lack myself And now I even have to scratch my back Myself Once you told me that if you scorn me, I'd sing the maiden's prayer again. Then I'd wish that you were there again to get into my head. Break man too. That's on my CD, and this next one is also on my CD. This is our last tune this evening. It's been really, really wonderful to be here with all of you guys. It's been a great audience, and it's been really wonderful to work with the students here at Butler County Community College, because there's a lot of talented kids here, and um, they're pretty serious, and they, they were really courageous today when I made them sing something they'd never sung before. I'd also really like to thank um, Roger Lewis for putting this all together. These guys are very lucky to have him. So let's hear it for Roger Lewis. In fact, I think he ought to come out here and take a bow. We'll get him out at the end of this. But he's demand. for all of you who don't really like jazz and are just being polite. And stars above that shine so bright Shines upon our caravan. Oh, sleepy, beside me here, where's we make we across the sand, 
so we may keep the memory of our caravan. Magic charm was of you beside me here beneath the blue. My dream of love is coming, coming true within our desert caravan. Frank Mantooth. Hawkins on the drums, playing his little brother Heine off. Journey Sutton, Frank Mantu, Glenn Holmes, 
and Phil Hawkins. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you all to a reception uh, for Frank and Tyranny, which will be held in the band room just across uh, down the hall here. And I'd like for you to come uh, and meet all of the uh, Butler musicians as well as all of the fine guest musicians who uh, were a part of this evening.